Hello. Today I'm going to do something special. Uh, I was asked actually by this team here, uh, the German Technology Day, which is an event. We are this year 15 different companies, German automation companies in Canada that will present uh, their, um, I would say their, their, their story. And ePlan is, is part of it, of course. Rital, Wago, and Pils being the, the first four founding companies of this German Technology Day. Uh, we will be presenting uh, all of these different companies in different fashions. I was actually required by one of them to take a list of parts. I'm going to show you this list here of parts. Uh, it's a simple Excel sheet here with a couple of parts. And they asked me, can you actually make those ones fit into your panel? because I already have a panel here that I started uh, putting uh, some parts in it. And it's, it's a little bit the reality that a lot of you face out there. You get to a company, the company has a panel already built. There is some room available and they ask you to add some additional controls or a modification of an existing control. And they ask you, okay, well, can you add these extra PLCs or whatever they are? You may not even know what these parts are. So let's see if you have this challenge in ePlan. This is my project that I'm working with right now. And this is how far I have my project. I have a few different parts already. And I have two panels built. Uh, primarily, this, this one is the one I have to fit in these components. And as you can see, this uh, panel here already has some, for those of you who do not know, this is done in Pro Panel, in ePlan Pro Panel. And this is what I have so far. So at this point in time, I see I don't have too much room. But before I actually start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check out if on our cloud, on the ePlan cloud, on the data portal, these particular parts, the ones that were submitted to me, are actually available on the data portal. Because if they are, I do not have too much work anymore to do except drag and drop these components onto my panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these part numbers primarily here. I'm just going to copy, Control C, Control V, and I will just paste these into my search filter uh, of the data portal. And we will see it takes a little bit of time because, of course, I'm just looking for a few 20 somewhat parts. And we have 1.3 million parts here. So it's, it's quite a big uh, cloud-based database. And you can see that it already found those parts. So what I can do, each of these parts individually, when you look at it, has, of course, not only the image, but also the schematic portion and the 3D portion most of the time. So what I will do here in this um, environment, I will simply use the pick list and import those parts so I can start using them. Okay, So that's going to be a lot faster. And once they are imported, I can do the next step. All of you that have ePlan can actually do this. Most of us do not know because we are typically starting with the schematics. Uh, so we draw some schematics on the front end. And then as you draw some schematics on the front end, you place components in here. And then those components are made available in a bill of material or basically in a device tag list, which you then drag and drop into your 3D. Now, I do not want to focus on the schematics now. I want to focus first on the digital twin, on the 3D, on the layout first. So I'm going to open here the device list. And in this device list, this is interesting because it allows me to actually do a count of the parts that have been used. You can see here in the front end and the ones that are actually submitted to me. I'm going to import this MER list that you just saw earlier. And they will appear here as a MER component ready to be placed, right? And it tells me also the quantity. So if you want to handle a little bit the quantities. So what I can do now is I can try and drag and drop and I will quickly figure out, ooh, this is a, if, if, if I have a few of those components, I do not have enough room right now as it is to actually place them. So I'm just gonna escape this two seconds. I'm gonna rework just slightly. So I'm, I'm just going to put this um, to the side for the moment, and I'm going to rework this a little bit. So at this point in time, 
maybe it would be a nice thing if I could just drag and drop those ones down here, you know, move them there. Uh, eventually, uh, do they fit all in there? Let's go uh, bits by only a few pieces at the same time. So I'm going to go and move. Ah, they should fit. So we shouldn't have any issues with those. I'll, I'll make them fit down at the bottom there. And uh, there we go. So let's take those ones. Let's just drag and drop them in here. Uh, let's stick them right there. So that's perfect. So these are all nicely placed. So it gave me a little bit of free space up here, which is actually good. And now I'm going to come back to these mer parts. Now I can check them out here. I can see the description because I added the parts designation in here. And I can start by basically just dragging and dropping this part in here. This is the first one. Let's see this one here. This is another part. I'm just going to place it there. PLC one. So I'm just going to go there. And as I place them, it's actually telling me, um, you know, how many I actually placed. And I can just one by one place them in here. And I will see if I actually have enough room to, to place them there. At one point in time, um, I may have to um, give up and say, OK, I don't have this part anymore. Or I don't have enough room for this part. Or uh, I will have to rework a little bit my, um, my whole uh, display here. Maybe I can fit two of these up here. So we'll see. Another thing I can do also is um, to work on what is displayed. Of course, this is a typical thing we do in ePlan where we just use a, a conventional copy format thing and we just paste the format here so it's a little bit nicer. We can see down here these are all mer parts, you know, with the parts. And I can drag and drop these components individually. There's one component I wanted to actually uh, take a look at is I believe it's this one here, um, the next one. Oh yeah, this is an interesting case where you can see that, okay, this component here, I'm not going to place it at, at the moment, but you can see that it does not have any 3D behind the scene. Why? Because it's so new that uh, Mur has not yet created the uh, 3D on the ePlan data portal, but it's not the end of the world because if we do have a case like this, what we can do is we can just uh, go and get those parts, the STP file, the step file from the data portal or from here in this case, I actually will take it from the MER website. So this is the part I was talking about. Here we can see we have a few different downloads. I will download in particular the step file. This is the step file here. You can see construction file STP. That's the one I'm actually interested in and I will download it. Now, once it is, oh, do I have to do this? Yeah, download. I guess it's downloading here as a step file. So this step file that we see here, I'm just going to extract it very quickly. So it's only a small step away to just get that part, right? It's going to be here. And now I'm going to make it usable on the ePlan side. So what I need to do here is to uh, open as some of you already may know because you've seen other videos. You open a macro project. This is where we save all our macros and 3D layouts. In this macro project, we actually import very quickly this um, layout uh, step file. So it's basically a 3D object. So it was here in the download step file imported. And as it will appear in our graphical editor here, the first thing that we always check is, does this object have multiple logic items? It doesn't, it's only one, so it's exactly perfectly sized. What I need to do now is to explain here to ePlan, where does it actually sit, okay? We call this the placement area. So we define the placement area to sit right there, which automatically will then trigger, you know, the top view, side view, etc. So this makes sense basically in our environment. The other thing we want is the handle. The handle is usually the center of the DIN rail, which is basically somewhere in this area here. You can see that's going to be the handle. So all we need to do at this point now 
is to just give it a name so we can use it for our part. This, in this case here, uh, this logic item basically uh, was an imported part from the MUR website. Uh, they already have here a certain name. We can keep that name. We can also add maybe a little bit of, of a detail, like this is a MUR part, you know, and what it is, a description a little bit more detailed. And in terms of macros, we like to save it in the right folder. So here, very often when we do something like this, we will take the part number and we will just add underscore 3D. So we know it's actually the 3D object, okay? And this is it. This is all we need to do. And this mer part is now ready to be used inside any given project. At this point, the macro project is no longer required. All you really need to do is you have to go and check that part and make sure that this part that we, we actually imported here, which already has a macro, if you open it here, we go up to the uh, part itself, which is right there in the database. So we already have a lot of information there. The only thing we don't have is the graphical macro. So here, when it comes to macros, there is a graphical macro missing. But of course, we just created it. So we just go in here, we pick that macro, it's now available. OK, and you pull back in this information into ePlan. Now, now that it is there, I can go back on my panel layout. Uh, so maybe for this particular exercise, I'm going to see uh, what can I move these? I think I can. I'm going to just try to move these a little bit further around, uh, have a different handle on those. So I'm going to use basically the handle that is the center handle. Uh, whoops, no, actually, no, I should have, wait. Select this, just move, and then move them over like this. That will give me enough room here to actually place and position this component, the um, 5174 that I just created there, and just place it. Should be uh, ready to go let's see where is it what was the component I just don't remember exactly the component because uh, we just flipped around uh, so much so the part here was the uh, where's the part number here the can boss they have a part number for this um, come on I have the Part number 57, okay, 57104. So technically, it's also at this point in time, 57104. It's also available here as a device that you can just drag and drop like this. This is actually the nice thing behind the whole thing, and you can just position it there. So there we go. We just place it, boom, it's available and you're ready to go. So we can see that I position most of these components. Uh, it is, of course, at this point, I have to admit, quite filled, but it's interesting. I have really focused my work primarily on the um, 3D portion of things, right? Nothing else. But now, if I want to, I can go back to my schematics, and inside my schematics, you will find all of these components. Remember, we named them PLC123. They are now in your navigator available as PLC123. They are all here. And you can also open them and you will see whether they are a mirror part, or what kind of part they are. And you can just drag and drop them from here uh, straight out of your device navigator and they will primarily allow you to just be represented here, as you can see here very quickly, boom shows up as a macro ready to be used, okay? So also on top of this, everything that we just added, if we go to our bill of material, obviously was just added in this bill of material, so it's automatically updated. Your MER parts are now in this list here. You can see them, they just appeared here because I placed them. So this is really the beauty of the digital twin. You can start at the digital twin, and then actually move on to your schematics. So you do not always have to first look into the schematics, 
create the bill of material, order the parts, and then place the 3D. You can do it the other way around also. So this is something that, uh, of course, we can show you again on the German Technology Day. Any one of my colleagues at ePlan will be able to show you this. Come and see us and, uh, yeah, hope to see you in big numbers there if you are in Canada. If you're not in Canada, well, all of these companies, I believe, are probably somewhere near you and can show you exactly the same thing. Thank you. Have a good day.